Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Thanks to 20 years of continuous occupation of space, we have a wealth of photographs and videos from low Earth orbit, and they are wonderful things to watch. Sometimes they show amazing things like this Soyuz launching towards the ISS. But even the random everyday views from low Earth orbit are compelling and hypnotic. They show the world moving slowly below the observer, land and sea, sometimes cities and of course clouds hanging in the atmosphere. Looking to the edge of the globe, you can see the thin atmosphere extending up towards space. And it's always humbling to realise that every human that's ever lived has done so in this thin skin of air that clings to the surface of the Earth by gravity. The blue fades into black as the air gets thinner, but then something else appears, a thin yellowish layer, separate from the lower atmosphere, and this stands out against the blackness of space. You might have seen this before and wondered what it is. This is the sodium layer. It's between 80 and 105 kilometers up depending upon atmospheric conditions, and it's only a few kilometers thick. This is a region of the atmosphere where sodium atoms are being excited and emitting light in the familiar yellow colour with a wavelength of about 589 nanometers. The sodium comes from meteors burning up in the upper atmosphere. As they hit the atmosphere, the kinetic energy is connect converted into thermal energy, and this converts their minerals into a plasma, which of course we see as a trail of light on the ground as a shooting star, which fades rapidly. But those liberated atoms remain afterwards, and they stay there for a long time, hanging out in the mesosphere, perhaps percolating downwards towards the surface. So this visible sodium layer is a lot thinner than the distribution of sodium atoms in the atmosphere, because the transition line that we see only comes from neutral atomic sodium. As we go higher in the atmosphere, the sodium atoms are more commonly found as ions, and lower in the atmosphere, the atoms are more, formal, are more commonly found in their molecular state. And so we see this yellow glowing layer standing out away from the surface of the Earth. And as it happens, this altitude is very close to that of the Kármán line, so it's almost like a visual reference for where space begins. Now, the meteors that are arriving at Earth don't just bring in sodium, they have many other minerals, and all of these also get deposited in the atmosphere. And over time, scientists have managed to identify the existence of other similar layers, you know, dominated by different elements. We've seen iron, potassium, and calcium. But none of these are as strong as the sodium, because the sodium is extremely efficient at converting the excitation energy into light that we can see. That's why we have low pressure sodium lights. So the sodium layer was first discovered from the ground using spectroscopy back in 1929. And since then it's been used by scientists as a way to probe atmospheric conditions in the mesosphere, which is actually a region of the atmosphere which is really hard to investigate directly since it's too high for balloons and too low for spacecraft. Now, from the ground, you can use lasers to excite the atomic sodium in that region, and then it re-emits the light, which you can observe back on the ground. And from that, you can measure the motion of the atmosphere or the temperature. The temperature of the air depends or changes the shape of the emission lines that we see, and the Doppler shift can, of course, change the wavelength that we see. There's one facility that I want to talk about that does uh, science like this. It's called the Purple Crow LiDAR Facility in Ontario, Canada. And it's notable because the primary mirror on the collector system is a rotating mercury mirror. That's a mirror that's essentially a 9 feet wide, 2.65 meters white. It's a tub of mercury and it's rotating at about 10 RPM, which means that it takes up a natural curvature which will focus the light on the detector system. And the only way they can make this work, by the way, is because it's only pointing straight up. If the mirror had to turn, then it would no longer be able to work like this. But one of the coolest things that can be done with this sodium layer is that it can be exploited by telescopes to help them see more detail in the sky than would normally be possible. So as you probably know, the resolving power of a telescope on the ground is limited by the turbulence of the atmosphere, which refracts the light from astronomical objects. Uh, and it's an effect that we can see with our naked eye. It's what makes the stars twinkle in the sky. So telescopes 
can have adaptive optics. This means the mirror is able to flex and change its shape in response to atmospheric distortion in, so that it can actually undo the atmospheric distortion and ultimately produce a much clearer image than would not, uh, otherwise be allowed. But to do this, they need to know how the atmosphere is distorting the light. So they take a reference star, which you can assume to be a perfect point source, and then you measure that with a real-time camera, taking your hundreds of frames per second, measuring the distortion, and then feeding that back into the uh, optic system so that it can undo the refraction. And it needs to be able to measure the star hundreds of times per second. Uh, the problem then is that the star has to be bright enough so that they can take the image fast enough and get enough detail. And not all astronomical targets will have a bright star close enough to the target. So instead, the sodium layer can be used to generate an artificial reference star. What you do is you have a laser which is tuned to excite the 589 nanometer sodium emission lines. And you fire that up alongside the telescope and in the sodium layer it's generating light which is uh, it essentially looks like a star. Technically it's a line through the atmosphere if you look at it from the side, but since the laser is placed next to the telescope it appears to be sufficiently point-like to act as a reference star and deliver image details that would normally be twinkled to death. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.